So I fully expected to be reviewing No Hard Feelings this week, you know, for the plot. <sighs> but when it came time for me to buy my tickets, I just couldn't pull the trigger for some reason. I was just looking for something a bit different, and instead, I decided to watch a limited release movie that I had no idea about. And what I ended up seeing was one of the biggest what the f movies of the year. And I also felt like I needed a shower after watching it. Let's discuss. I watched so you don't have to. Before I get started, I'd like to kindly ask that you hit the like button and please subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. Come on, do it. Do it! God is a Bullet follows Detective Bob Hightower who attempts to infiltrate an evil cult to save his kidnapped daughter and avenge the murder of his wife. He enlists the help of a former cult member to help him take matters into his own hands. Right off the bat, I'm going to say this is one of the strangest movie theater experiences that I can remember. In the early stages of watching it, I felt like it was going to be a callback to the uber-violent revenge flicks of the 70s. And for a good portion of this film, it is just that. It is excessive in every sense of the word. Boy, that escalated quickly. Some of the ideas presented in this movie are excessive, the language is excessive, and yes, of course, the violence is excessive. And yes, because of all of that, this movie is going to turn some people off, and you're going to know pretty quickly what type of movie you're in for if you happen to buy a ticket for this. In fact, there was an older couple in my theater that clearly didn't know what they were signing up for, and they left about halfway through the movie and it's difficult to say whether or not that was because of the excessive nature and vulgarity of it, or because they just thought that it sucked, and honestly, I could see it going either way. Or maybe even both. That makes sense. After the movie was over, I checked the Rotten Tomatoes reviews for it, because that's always good for a laugh. And yeah, I kind of needed a laugh after watching this type of film. At the time that I checked it, there was a grand total of six reviews and five of those reviews were women. And all of the female critics spoke very negatively of the treatment of women featured in this film. We need to be conscious of our bias. A couple of them even called the film extremely misogynistic. While I will admit that the treatment of some of the female characters in this movie was shocking, and frankly, a bit uncomfortable, I do think these critics, with all due respect, are applying 2023 ideologies to their opinion on this film. Because to me, these moments were supposed to be uncomfortable. That's the purpose they are serving. Because it's all part of the plan. They are the catalyst for making you hate certain characters in this movie and making you want to see them get their comeuppance. I mean, that is, after all, what a villain is supposed to be. Perhaps people have gotten too comfortable with their sympathetic villains that they like to throw at us constantly in modern entertainment. So to take the actions of the villain that personally, and to call the entire film misogynistic, does seem like a bit of a stretch. Why are you the way that you are? That being said, some of this violence was over the top, almost to the point that it was comical. The cult leader, who is dangerously close to being a full-blown cartoon character, Based on his somewhat unusual performance, I mean he's just too much, there's one scene where he's shooting someone's face off, and it feels like it drags on for an eternity. And it's that excessiveness that we talked about, and it feels like a bit of overkill. Stop it! The main character in this movie, played by Jamie Lannister himself, is the kind of mild-mannered desk cop that we've seen thrown into these unusual and extravagant situations many times in films. And obviously he is put into this situation when his daughter disappears, but I have to be honest, it never really felt like he was racing against the clock to find her, or that he was being pushed to his limits. I always think about Hugh Jackman's character in Prisoners, who in my opinion is a great depiction of a desperate parent. Bob in this movie just seems so nonchalant about it most times. There's really no sense of urgency because the movie kind of skips over those moments early on when he has to deal with the reality that someone has his daughter and he doesn't know where she is. And only a handful of times did I actually feel like he was thinking about his daughter. 
How can you not care? Like this. And in my opinion, that should be depicted in his character throughout the entire film as a way of building tension. Maka Monroe plays the former cult member who ends up helping him, and her whole existence and willingness to help him find his daughter just comes off as very convenient to me. And I don't know if this was an editing or a writing issue because again, the beginning part of this movie does feel a bit glossed over, but they do very much rush into their partnership, and because of that, the dynamic between them doesn't always work. I'm having trouble. I actually thought she did a great job acting-wise, and if the movie was based on her character, a cult member who escaped and wants to take out revenge on the person who ruined her life, honestly, to me, that would have been a much better movie. Jamie Foxx is also inexplicably in this movie as a tattoo artist who shares his nuggets of wisdom with the main characters from time to time. And this has to be one of the most random casting choices I've seen in some time. So this is basically a road trip movie, but there's also this subplot going on back in their hometown that feels very shoehorned in. And when they show those scenes, they just feel like they are completely out of left field. This is also where we get possibly the strangest husband and wife argument that I've ever seen on film. What the hell am I looking at? When does this happen in the movie? You ever see two characters who are very obviously trying to antagonize each other, but the dialogue is so weird and unnatural that it kind of takes you out of the moment and comes off more like a comedy skit than anything? This moment was that turned up to 11. This movie definitely has some dialogue issues that range from over pretentious all the way down to completely ridiculous. It's another instance where in one moment they are trying too hard to be edgy, and in other instances the movie thinks that it's more intelligent than it actually is. I can handle things, I'm smart! So after this long two hour journey, we come to the climax, which I have to admit is probably the most entertaining part of the film for me. It was basically Rambo 2008 levels of people getting blown apart with machine guns, and just as quickly as it all begins, it comes to a screeching halt and gives us kind of a false finish. Because the movie drags on for another 20 minutes after that, and it just made for an uneven, oddly paced finale. I don't get it. It kind of felt like they were scrambling to wrap up stories that they forgot to resolve. Overall, I felt like God is a Bullet is a strange movie that actually has a decent premise, but to me it just doesn't always know exactly what it wants to be. I appreciated the willingness to go there with the violence, but at the end of the day, it all really didn't amount to much. I do think there's a really good story in there somewhere, and perhaps in different hands, you would have had a different outcome. But instead, a majority of this movie comes off as more ridiculous than anything. It's over the top while still trying to tell this gritty, grounded story. Unfortunately, I didn't feel much of anything while watching this, and that's why I'm going to give it the careless Sam Gerard. I don't care! Y'all be cool. Shut up.